When we were little kids, we would make our parents check under our beds to make sure there were no monsters hiding there to hurt us while we slept. We told ghost stories and watched movies about monsters and witches and feared the boogeyman. As we grew older, we stopped having our parents check under the bed, but the monsters were still there. They were inside of us, lurking in the darkness, waiting to take hold. Death is a monster. Betrayal. Love. Addiction, too. You can get addicted to anything. Alcohol. Uppers. Downers. People. And you can't help it. Well, you could just stop. Just stop what you're doing, you might say. Well, that's an astonishingly good idea you have there, but it's not that easy. Some people get addicted to feeling. To feeling love. To feeling sadness. When people ask what made you like this, they always seem to mean who made you like this. It could be a mother, a father, a daughter, a son, a Susan, a Jennifer, a John, a Jack, or a Leo, a Leo Bloom. They might come at a time you needed them, or they might have been there all along, but they're there. And you think it will last forever, but it never does, does it? And afterwards, when it's all over and the feeling is gone, you pull together memories like a strand of dulling pearls. You wear them like a necklace always, close to your heart and tight at your throat, always one choked breath away from suffocating. To be happy, to be so truly incandescently happy, it's like a drug itself. You want to bottle it up and get high on it forever, but forever can be awfully short. You don't even notice when it begins. You just slowly lose yourself. You can't recognize your own reflection. Colors begin to fade. You feel your insides rotting like an old piece of fruit someone forgot about. And the pills keep you contained, keep you from feeling anything. Did you know that you can even numb that sense of numbness? And you find yourself drawn to photographs because they capture moments that can never happen again, but can be remembered forever. You can torture yourself thinking about how you were once ever so happy. The Inuit language has over 50 words for snow, but there is not even one word in the English language to describe the intense melancholy and equal joy of feeling a phantom presence at your side. But still, you feel lonely, so lonely that you finally understand that trite contrived phrase of being alone in the middle of a crowd. Friends, loved ones begin to feel like strangers, shells of people you once knew. You begin to feel yourself dissolving into nothing and want to surrender to the whiteness 